Die Hybrid Cross Mendo. So here we have a different one. We have one where Mendo did. So he took one with uh, as a round yellow pea in the parent generation and he crossed it with a wrinkle green pea. When he crossed these two together, this parent can only give a capital R. There it is. And this parent can only give a small r. There it is. And then this parent can only give a capital Y and a small y. So the first generation is going to be all heterozygous for all traits. Over here it tells you that capital R is round and small r is wrinkle. Capital Y is yellow and small y is green. So you take the F1 generation and you cross pollinate them. Then you would get your cross. So can you guess what generation this will be? It's going to be the F2 generation. But first we have to put out the allele for each of the parents. So here we took the capital R and one of the Y. So the first one is a capital Y. Then we do a capital R and a small Y. Small R, capital Y, and small all, small Y. And since the other parent is the same thing, you just put it down the same. Okay, that's the hardest part. After you're done with that, the rest is pretty much easy. So, we take these two, we put it in here, and take these two, we put it in here. So we should get two capital R and two capital Y. Which is a round yellow. And for this one, we get two capital R, a big Y, and a small Y. Because R is dominant, it's still yellow. Oops, I mean it's still round. And Y is dominant, so it's still yellow. So these phenotypes are the same, but different genotype. For the third one, we have a capital small r and a two capital Y. Now notice again, the genotype is different, but the phenotype is the same. Then you fill in the last one. Then you fill in the rest of them. Now for this one, Capital R means round and small y recessive means green. So this is a round green. And then you fill in the rest. This one is a wrinkle yellow and this one is a wrinkle yellow and this one's the same. And this is the only one that is a wrinkle green. Then after you finish it, you have to count the genotype total and the phenotype total. So the genotype how many of them are round and yellow? You don't have to worry about the second one. This dash represents, it doesn't matter if it's a small r or capital R. So this one would fall under this category. This one, this one. So any of them that are round and yellow, this triangle right here, is all going to fall under this category. So there's 9 of them out of 16 box total. There's 3 that are round and green. 3 that are wrinkle and yellow and only one that is wrinkle and green. So this pattern is very common for heterozygous cross. When you have a dihybrid heterozygous cross with each other, you get a 9331 ratio. It's very common, so you hear that a lot. For general bio, you don't have to worry about dihybrid cross as much, but for Bio AP, and if you're taking the SAT for bio, this is something that you will have to learn how to work out. But using common sense and then working it really slowly, you'll be able to get all these things really easily. The only hard part is later on when these things start to change and you have to work them out one at a time. That's when it gets harder. SAT and ACT. So, why do we need to do dihybrid cross? The dihybrid cross is a very small cross pertaining to the genetic branch of biology. It's hardly used as much and we don't concentrate much on that. And it's very time consuming and we could just focus on the basic, the monohybrid cross, which is used more. So why the dihybrid cross? Why do we take the SAT? Why do we take the ACT? Well, the purpose is to separate the good students from the bad students. Good as in those who can use the reasoning skill and bad as in because those students who cannot. We're not saying that you have to be good test takers to make you a good student. You can be a good test takers 
but a bad normal student where your grades aren't doing so well. Or you can be a student who works well, get a lot of good grades, but you're not a good test taker. So that qualifies you as the second level as well. As long as you're not getting low grade and low test score, then you're pretty much in the okay category. Okay as in you're either a good test taker or you have good grade. But college nowadays raised the standard. They want both. They want someone who has high grade and someone who has good test score. So that's why it's very important to do both. So the SAT and the ACT is called reasoning tests. They're called reasoning tests because they want to test your reasoning skill, which is very important. For example, let's say you're a doctor and then a patient comes in. You can't just flip through a textbook and say, oh, this person has this kind of sickness or this kind of problem. You have to use your reasoning to figure out what is the person's situation. That's why it's really hard to go to college at a high level and to have a high occupation like being a doctor. You have to be able to use your reasoning skill. If you cannot do that, that's why it's harder to get accepted into those college. They want to break apart those who can use their reasoning skill and those who cannot. It, on the ACT, like ACT science, you see that it's very much reasoning skill. You don't have to have a strong background in science, but once you be able to use reasoning skill, like a detective skill, like figure out if this was a situation, this, this, and so on, then you can figure it out. Reasoning skill, it's different because someone who has good memory skill, like, oh, you can read a book and you have good memory and then you do well on the quiz or a test, that just means that you have good memory, but that doesn't mean you have good reasoning skill. Good reasoning skill is very important. For example, you know how you read a textbook and all those stuff that's written down in a textbook? They're not just written down because someone just write it down because they know it. No, it's because someone did an experiment, someone proved something, something happened, they used their reasoning skill and then they successfully make it in order to get it down on paper. So that's why. So for example, like all those people who did their experiments and such, genetic and evolution, they have to use their reasoning skill. Darwin, Mendel, their reasoning skill to be able to do all these stuff. They weren't born with the knowledge, nor do they have textbook like we do nowadays to read stuff. They have to be able to figure out what do we do in the situation, giving the following condition and so on. So that's why, that's what college want from you. That's why they make you take these reasoning tests. They want to be able to test, oh, you have good memory, you do well in school, okay. But are you able to use your reasoning skill if giving a certain condition? That's what separates the good student from the bad student who can go to college. So that's why we have to spend a lot of time working on dihybrid crosses. That's why we have to take the SAT and the ACT. It's all about reasoning, which is one of the many important factors that determines if you're qualified to go to college and such, so on. So, how well did you do on the SAT or the ACT? 